All right, so thank you for joining me. This is episode eight of our One Bedroom series. And today we're going to talk about space. So in AutoCAD, there is a tool that is called the space tool. So as you can see, it can be found right here. And also if you go into the, into the tool palette and we go to design and you scroll down, you have the same thing down here. So we're going to talk about what it is used for and uh, how to put it in your drawing. That makes sense, I guess. <laughs> So the best way for me to explain what this space tool is, is to illustrate it. So here I have a box. Better yet, let's make this box look like something we are all familiar with. A building. Yeah? So this is a one room building. And inside this one room building, we have nothing. <laughs> and uh, what we want to do though, is to replace this nothingness with what we call space. It sounds crazy, but I hope that you kind of get the idea. So in AutoCAD, what we would do is to add space within each room. All right. And each room is bounded by the walls that make up that room. Okay. And this space object would be able to give us a lot of information about that particular room. So for instance, we would be able to name that space such as let's say the bedroom. Once we give this space a name, we would also be able to use AutoCAD's smart tag to populate the name of the room when we're ready to annotate the drawing and also plot the drawing. We would also be able to pull various information about the room, such as uh, the floor area, the volume of the room, the perimeter of the room. Also, we would be able to uh, pull the types of finishes that are being used within that room, whether it be, let's say, for instance, ceramic tiles on the floor, red paints on the walls, wooden ceilings, uh, whatever is in that room, the space tool allows us to capture all that information and push them into, let's say, for instance, a schedule. All right. So as you can see that the space tool becomes very important and very helpful and will save you a lot of time in the future, especially if you're working on a very large project. So let's move over to AutoCAD where I will show you how to get this done. The last thing we did was our foundation. Um, what we're going to do is to go back over to our floor, our ground floor plan. So let's go back over and um, of course, all of these can be found in our project navigator that we've been using all this time. So we had the foundation. We would go back to our ground floor drawing, which is this that is opening open up here. And we're going to go back to the top view 2D. So we're going to add spaces to each of these rooms, which is quite simple. We would go to the home tab and we go down to generate space. We're going to use a generate space because it automatically uh, identify your boundaries and create a space within those boundaries for us. If we were to use just the space tool, we would have to draw boxes to, to the size of the room and that kind of stuff. If you're not seeing it up here, we're going to go, we can find it down here and we would go down to the space generate tool right here. Okay. Now, actually, if you go down the side of this bar, we have one that is dedicated to spaces. And inside of it, we have some preloaded spaces that we could actually use. But these were specifically made for office buildings and that kind of stuff. So for instance, lobbies, reception, stairway, corridors, that kind of thing. You know, so we're not going to use those. We're going to just stick with the one that is up here where we can create our own space. So we're going to click on the generate space. Let me minimize that. Zoom in a little bit. And now you can see as I move the mouse over each room, you see a red box being generated within each room. And what it does is to use the walls as a boundary for each room. 
okay so before we click though what we're going to do is to go over to the properties box and we're going to make sure that everything is okay over here so the first thing you want to do is to change the name of this space so we're going to call this the kitchen enter everything is here looks good we're going to go down to the component dimensions we can change a couple of things here if we need to all right so i usually make the surface height of my space the same height as the wall okay so the walls on this building are 10 feet tall so we're going to make sure that our surface height is also 10 feet high once that is set then we're now clear to go ahead and add spaces so i'm going to just go ahead and add the first space here and that's what it looks like when you add it so as you go and add each you want to change the name as you go along so we're going to do the bathroom now we're going to change this to bathroom click do the bedroom click do the living click and then we're going to do porch I mean, you can go back and change these names afterwards it it doesn't matter all of these you can do afterwards actually so there we have all five spaces being added it hit enter and then we're out of that command so what i'm going to do about now is to go into the 3d mode so you can see what's happening here x-ray so each room has a space object inside of it like this box and this box can give us all the information that we mentioned earlier in the video such as the area volume perimeter all of that can be found down here okay area 132 square feet volume 1122 cubic feet perimeter it gives you everything and th these can be helpful, especially if you know, you're know you doing a large project and you would like to know um, the, the total area or the area of, or the volume of a particular space and that kind of stuff. All right. It also can be used to pull finishes that would be used in that room. And we would find all of that under what we call extended data. All right. We would click on this button here to add some property sets, but we're not going to get into all of that in this video. We're gonna just stick to the, you know, just the regular stuff here and call it that. Now, what I'm gonna do is to isolate these objects. So just to show you what's happening here. So let's say we uh, select all and we're gonna isolate them. So we go to this button down here, click on it and we're gonna say isolate. So these are what the spaces look, would look like by themselves. All right, just some boxes to fill the, the, the voids, basically. All right, now AutoCAD actually give us the ability to add ceilings inside of these space and also floor slab. So in the previous video, when we did a floor slab, we could actually skip that step and add the floor slab right here from the space object but i wanted to show you that way as well as this way and let you decide which one you prefer to use all right and how do we do that though in the component dimensions over here you would see a section for ceiling height which is already set at eight feet six and but the ceiling thickness is zero that is why we're not seeing a ceiling as yet so let's let's add a ceiling thickness of I'm going to give it two inches. OK, and that would include the ceiling finishing material as well as the, the joist and all of those stuff. So let's say two inches. Now you can see a ceiling appear within that space. All right. Um, and it is at a height of what? Eight feet, six inches. All right. Now, I, let's say I want the ceiling to be nine feet 
up. All right. Now you can see that the entire thing goes up above the rest, which I don't want. That that would be the space above the ceiling, which would which we can find right here. All right. We can minimize it here, or we can just go back to our uh, default surface height and put it back down to 10 feet. And that would just bring it back down to what we want, okay? The same thing we can do for floor thickness. So our floor th thickness would actually be six inch, not six feet, six inch. And just like that, we have a floor thickness. All right, so we could do it here as well. But of course we did that in the previous video, so we're not gonna leave that. We're gonna actually remove that. But I'm gonna keep the ceiling. So we're gonna add ceiling to all of these rooms. And what I would do is to just click on all of them and just do one thing. Just say our nine feet. I'm gonna add a ceiling thickness of two. And I'm gonna drop this back down to 10 feet. So everybody is on the same height. And of course you could put like, say for instance, the bedroom ceiling could be a little lower or higher depending on how you want it. Same thing for the kitchen or the bathroom. You can decide that it all depends on how you are doing your design. So I'm gonna unisolate. So we go to end isolation. Now we're having another problem, okay? In our 3D view, we're seeing the the box itself. And I don't want us to see the box. I just want the ceiling alone and get rid of the box, okay? So what I'm gonna do is to hide that layer. So what we would do is to click on it, go to Edit Style. And if you don't see the Edit Style button, you could actually just right click on it and you just say edit style and it brings you to the same spot okay and then we'd go over to the volume option and we're going to override this volume again we're getting into some you know, deep stuff but don't worry yourself you'll get the hang of it and what we do is basically just turn it off turn off the visibility of that entity okay and we hit OK and just like that, it is gone. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to see that space when we're going to print the drawing. Okay, it is just there to give us the information that we need. It is still there in the background, but we don't want to see it. So now you can see that we have our ceiling and we can actually see inside of the house. Actually, let, let me put this in conceptual so you can see what is happening. All right, so the house actually have a ceiling. Thing will come together nicely, man. All right, so let's go back to top view and 2D wireframe. Also, when we are printing the drawing, we do not want to see these hatch lines. So we could actually hide these hatch lines or put them on a layer that will not print. And how do you do that? Simply click on it and we would go to edit style again. Where is it? edit style and we would go to the plan view we're going to override it and these two top ones we're going to actually put them on a layer that will not print so when you go to print them they won't show up on the paper so we would put them on a def point layer because we all know that the def point layer does not print okay Def point. I'm going to put this one on def point as well. I'm going to hit OK. And you could do the same thing for the high, low details, but I'm going to just do the that one and I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to hit OK. So even though you're seeing it here on this drawing, when you go to print it, you will not see it. Okay. And that's important because we don't want these, all these hatching and all of that in the drawing when we're going to print it. All right, the last thing I want to show you is how to separate a space without a wall. So like this living area, I, I kind of want to break this area into two, but there's no wall to break that area. So what I'm gonna do is to draw a line here using the 
space separator all right this tool right here so what we do is we click on it and now we can go ahead and draw the line where we want the space to be divided so i'm going to draw a line from here i'm going to start it on the edge of the wall come across and i'm going to kind of uh track it down like so click on that x and i'm going to bring it up like that and i'm going to hit enter just like that this space okay then what's going on here no what should happen here is that um this this area should be divided into two sections but it didn't happen and i think i know why what we're going to do is go back to our edit style and because we had turned off the volume um that's the problem there so what we're going to do is turn it back on and we're going to put it again on a layer that doesn't print so let's put it on the def point layer and we're going to turn down the transparency all the way to 90 because when we go into 3d we don't want to see the space at all um, so we want to make it as transparent as possible even though it is still there so initially we had turned it off so that's why it, it, the separation tool is not working so we're going to say okay okay and we're going to redo this so let's do it again separate i'm going to click bring it down i'm going to just hover over that point so that i can get that a tracking line and i'll click there and move over and click once you draw the lines where you want it just hit enter and that should give you two separate spaces just like that all right so what we're going to do now is to rename this space and we could call it you know i don't know call it passage something like that and we're going to call this well it's living already we're just going to remove the two from off of it and so we have our spaces just like that so we're going to go back to 3d go back to x-ray mode so now we can see that the spaces are still there but they are kind of uh, transparent especially the the box itself and yeah, it's very very transparent all right all right guys so yeah Up. by the way guys don't forget to hit the save button also don't forget to hit the like button yes man hit the like button there see him so all right so let's hit the save button first and then we're gonna go down and hit the like button Okay, so that wraps it up for this video. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions at all, any questions with regards to Space AutoCAD, just drop them in the comments, okay? And don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe, all right? So thanks again for watching and I respect. Cool. Ooh.